<laughs> Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and we are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Our next guests have a brand new show called Secrets of the Zoo, airing Sundays at 9 on Nat Geo Wild. In it, we get a behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to run one of the best zoos in the country. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, a lot. It takes a lot. <laughs> um, I make no secret of it. I absolutely love animals. I am thoroughly excited to talk to these two. Ladies and gentlemen, make a ton of noise from Nat Geo Wild's Secret of the Zoo. We've got zoo staff veterinarian, Dr. Priya Bapadra is here. Make some noise for Priya. <laughs> and keep it going for head of zoo program, Susie Rapp, everybody. Come on. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the energy in this building right now is at 11. People are thoroughly excited <laughs> that you're here uh, and that you've brought some of your friends with you, which we will get to in a little bit. Uh, but first, congratulations on this show. It hey. is wonderful. Yeah, yeah. thanks. We're yeah, excited absolutely. about it. You should be. It's a fantastic show. Uh, I got the chance to see a couple of the episodes, the three that are out there. Uh, and like I said in, the, in the, up, uh, the up top there, I love animals. I love these shows. It's right in my wheelhouse. And I love seeing all the stuff that happens behind the scenes, the, the, the how and how you guys do it and pull it off. Uh, where did the idea for this show come from? Did they come to you? Did you guys reach out to Nat Geo Wild? What's the beginning of, of this I, show? I think it's kind of a combination. It was a, yeah. You know, yeah. It, was a, it was a big collaboration. Yeah. Um, you know, the Columbus Zoo is one of the most progressive zoos in the country. And I think just the amount of passion that we exude and the expertise that we have and all of our global conservation programs make it um, something for Nat Geo to really um, invest in and be yeah. proud of. And it, I think it's a really good collaborative effort. And I think what we do really fits with their theming. Um, and really being able to showcase some of the amazing things that we do at the zoo is phenomenal. Yeah, for sure. It, it really Phenomenal is the word, that yeah. some of the amazing things well, you guys and we, do. And there's so much that we do mm -hmm. that the regular guests that come to the zoo every Every day, they don't realize yeah. that. Like Priya said, the, yeah. the global conservation that we're involved in, the um, it's not a nine to five job. I mean, we can <laughs> <laughs> we can tell you that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think that's that's something that it's it's nice to be able to tell our story and for people to really see what goes into running one of the most magnificent zoos in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> I mean, it really is the the breadth of like the the variety of animals. I mean, Dr. Priya being staff. Uh, uh, vet, how many different animals do you oversee or are you watching after in any given time? So the zoo actually houses over 10,000 animals, so hundreds of hundreds of different species. So we are responsible for a lot, and obviously it's not just myself. We have a, a nope, really- No, you're the only one. It is just you and 10,000 animals. That is how this works. Um, oh gosh, oh, no, that, I one, that, okay. one, that one end well. Um, but you know, there's, there's a big animal health team. There's a, there's a lot of species it's a lot of things that we have to our fingers are on the button all the time and yeah. it's just a matter of balancing everything and um, the, the the show is an amazing um, ability to experience that to right. witness that and to see that you know we have um, cheetahs guinea fowl giraffe just we, we want to be able to tell our story and show all of the things that we do about yeah. all of the animals that we take care of and there's um, an old I know this is going to seem silly, but trust me. Seinfeld, there's an episode of Seinfeld where Kramer refuses to see a human doctor, and his reasoning is, I'm going to the vet, they got to see a cow, a chicken, a pig, a dog, I mean, all in one true. day. And, and you laugh at that, but that is your life. You've got to see every animal yeah. in 10,000 different species. Absolutely, and no day, no day is ever the same. Yeah. You know, you can never repeat a single day, and I think that's the same for anyone that works in the animal field, and all of the amazing right. animal care staff that we have at the zoo, it's the same. Um, so it keeps it very interesting, and it's part of the reason we have that drive and that passion to yeah. keep coming back to work, because every day is always different. That's pretty amazing. Susie, how long have you been with the, the Columbus Zoo? I have been with the Columbus Zoo for 38 years. Hold for applause. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Yeah, Phenomenal. I, I, li I like to say I crawled up there as a baby, and the wolves <laughs> way, raised me, but no, that's not the case. I actually started right out of high school. Wow. I knew I was going to work at the Columbus Zoo when I was 10 years old. You knew right away. And, um, you know, back then, the Columbus Zoo was one of the worst zoos in the country. Was it really? But it was just, but it was my zoo. Didn't matter. It was all I knew. And today, it's definitely one of the finest in the world. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, 
been so incredible to be a part of that. Is it funny, like, now that the, the show is, is happening now, but, you know, having spent the time you have there, are you like, what took you guys so long? This is one of the most amazing stories never yeah. told. Where have well, you been? I, <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. And I, I kind of think that's, you know, it's, it's so incredible that Nat Geo mm -hmm. Wild picked this show up because I think if zoos have done one thing wrong, it's not tell their story. Yeah. And I think now we have a platform to tell that story mm -hmm. of everything, mm -hmm. you know, that Priya does, everything that 2,000 employees do. It's crazy. And it's, you know, it's global conservation. It's animal welfare. I mean, mm -hmm. it goes on and on and on. It goes helping confiscated animals that are in horrible conditions. Mm. And most people don't know that. They don't realize that zoos are, it's so On much the bigger conservation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Than, than you just walking through the, the front gate and getting to experience mm -hmm. these incredible animals. And of course, that's a huge part of it too. Yeah. But um, there's so much more to it. Over the years, as like our climate has changed and as the world has changed, have you have you seen and witnessed and been at the forefront of the scope of the work having to change as well yeah. of like oh, the role the zoo plays? Totally. Yeah. And and this, the worst part of it is, I've I've actually seen animals that were endangered species then taken off the endangered species list and then put back put on back. the oh. endangered mm -hmm. species. That's got to break list. your heart. And and even <clears throat> in worse shape now. And so it's. It's sad. But I think it's because of zoos that we're making such an impact towards exactly. conservation. And yeah. you can see this on the show. Um, you know, we, we help rehabilitate manatees from the wild that are orphaned for various different reasons. Um, they come to the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium for rehabilitation and they get released back into the wild. And another story that you see on the zoo that I think I'm super, super proud of is um, the wilds, our conservation facility that's 80 miles from the zoo. Yeah. Um, they um, have scimitar horned oryx, so beautiful antelope species classified beautiful. as extinct in the wild. And it was because of facilities like the wilds that they actually contributed to repopulating this entire species wow. back into their native ranges. I mean, it doesn't, amazing. you can't, you can't beat that. Right. No. That, and that impact that you can have on species survival in, yeah. in their native range. And even the science that mm -hmm. Priya works on a lot and that we work on is to benefit animals in the wild. Right. So it's to, you know, find out ways that we can help them or save them. And, yeah, using and our animals as ambassadors to learn about their reproduction or the science or which their behavior. Which you're going to meet today. Yeah, we're going to meet a couple in a little yeah, bit, actually. Absolutely. I'm really excited about that. <laughs> uh, before we bring them out and we get a chance to hang out with them, there are a, a couple of images that I wanted to go to. If, if we could do me a favor, save the first one for later, but let's start. Oh, yeah, we're going to come back to this character. I picked that one out special. Let's go to the second one. Uh, let's go to the second one for now. Uh, walk me through some of these images, what we're seeing here, what we're doing. Uh, uh, obviously, adorable baby tigers, right? What's happening here? What am I looking at? So these are endangered Amur tiger cubs, and oh. um, our keepers went through a period to try and help them feel way more comfortable in their habitat before we let the mom out. Um, we went through a period of actually taking them into the yard with the keepers, positively reinforcing that interaction with the people by using meat and feeding them, and just the allowing hand feeding them. the hand feeding them with, with tongs. tongs. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and allowing them to explore their habitat so they know where the dangers are and you know if there's there's a little drop in the grass that the mom may not be aware of because yeah. she's having to go out and man three cubs. So <laughs> this was a really, really <laughs> nice way for the keepers to kind of facilitate that. That's pretty amazing. Uh, do we have uh, we got a few more. I just love these because they give a sense of, of the work that you guys are doing. So what, what are we looking at here? So these are southern white rhinos um, out wow. at our conservation facility at the wild. The wild, you were just talking about the wild. Absolutely, yeah. and this is Cody, one of our um, animal management specialists, out feeding them and doing his daily routine, looking after them, evaluating them. Um, and we have one of the only fourth generation southern white rhino calves born out of their native range. And that's really? how amazing the, the um, population management and the reproduction at the wilds is because yeah. of that beautiful space. That's a 10,000 acre conservation facility where animals are just kind of free to roam in these large pasture savanna like areas. And something like that, that speaks to the, the comfort level of the animals and mm -hmm. how they, they feel like they're at home and so they can yeah. do the things that they would naturally do out in the wild. Oh, and that's why amazing. you call it the wild. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. I just got it. <laughs> and it's amazing to be able to experience that with people and, you know, have people go out there and, and connect and inspire people, inspire people. And it's one of the only places that you can go in North America where you, you're, you're driving around and it feels like you're on safari in Africa. Um, so what an amazing ability to kind of 
share that love and passion yeah. and all of the amazing science and reproduction that happens there with our zoo guests. It's pretty amazing. And people don't realize this, but we actually have a full-size rhino now that we're going to bring out. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. That's not happening. Um, oh, okay. This is, uh, all right, so yeah, tell us a little bit about this one. This one I'm going to hand over to Susie. Well, yeah. um, this is Fergus, and that young lady Fergus. holding Fergus happens to be my daughter, <laughs> who was pretty much raised at the Columbus Zoo, so she doesn't... Um, no much different, yeah. um, but so she works there and she has been for many, many years. But Fergus was a little guy that was kicked out of his mom's pouch. So oh. we ended up raising him and now it's time for Fergus to become a big kangaroo. He's truly way too big to be in that pouch, but he didn't think so. He <laughs> thought we should still carry him around. Susie, at what point does it dawn on you that you live in a Disney movie? Because <laughs> you, like, you know, it's, I, it's just, oh, he was kicked out of his pouch as a young did. kangaroo, and now we've raised him as one of We're, our own, I, and it's time to release him back. It's, it's just like, time it's unbelievable. for him to realize yeah. he's a big boy now. And along the and way, lessons are learned about being a grown and, kangaroo and all these and, different and, things, and like, it's unbelievable. And, and it shows the introduction, and which started off a little rough, Yeah. and uh, but but ended beautifully. So um, Fergus now knows he's a kangaroo. He still, you know, gets a little confused. He yeah. loves the people and he loves to inter yeah, interact with the people. So we do have to have staff down in our kangaroo exhibit because Fergus will be with the people. What a perfect, um, he looks like such a Fergus too. He, <laughs> doesn't he look like a Fergus? Yeah. But it's a, it's a lovely story and it's just another, you know, great thing that, yeah. um, no shortage of Nat those stories. Nat Geo Wild is, is sharing with the world. It's amazing. I think we have one more. Uh, let's take a look, and then we'll, we'll, we'll bring out one of our buddies here. One more image here. Uh, <laughs> not as oh, cute girl. and cuddly as Fergus. <laughs> but, I don't know. Uh, She's pretty cute and cuddly. I'm not going to lie. She's one I of my favorites. I take it back. Favorite. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So <laughs> tell me the story here. <laughs> so this is Rosie, our um, black rhino at the Columbus yeah. Zoo. Um, she's one of our older girls, and mm. um, she actually gets a little bit of dental disease, just oh. like we do if we don't brush them. So I'm in the process of doing a dental exam, having a look at her teeth, and the keepers actually were really, really, um, what's the word, excited for me that they actually let me brush her teeth, which is something that I don't typically do as a vet. Um, but they could see that excitement, like, oh my gosh, you know, I get to look at them when they're under yeah. sedation and under anesthesia. So this was a real treat for me to be able to participate in, in her. And she's, she's an amazing animal, an amazing yeah. ambassador. I mean, just being able to um, have people see her and be able to tell the story of rhinos in, in their native ranges is cool. It's funny, even in this image where it, it is cropped so tightly, you can still get a sense of scale of this, oh, yes. of this animal yes. because of how girl. large. <laughs> I mean, your whole head is easily the, 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 the size of that nostril and mouth combination that we're looking at And right as there. rhinos go, black rhinos are one of the smallest black one, rhino species. That's so that, yeah, so the white rhinos that you saw in the picture before, they're one of the larger species. Wow. Um, and black rhinos are a little, the, the kind of dinky petite rhinos, but yes, she's still rather large. She is. Well, let's go from rather large to the opposite end of the spectrum and live and in person. I'm, I'm thoroughly excited. I got a chance to meet uh, Trout backstage, but uh, <laughs> our audience has only been teased ever since late. So I think it'd be so great. So you want to see Trout? Uh, yeah, I'd love to meet. I'd love to have Trout come out if we Are could they? at this time. So we're going to bring Trout out. Now, for the audience, is there anything? Should they be quiet? No. Nope. These animals, you know, one thing, these are part of our ambassador program. They're yeah. animal programs, animals. The animals that we brought, they've been trained for this. And um, we start when they're really, really young. So Trout's been... Trout, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome Trout to the stage. Come on, buddy. Need a hand? Oh, buddy. oh there you go. So good, good boy. Good. Right over You're there, so Trout. Good. We can... Good boy. Oh, um, goodness. Yes. So... Uh, do you want to host? Is that what's happening? <laughs> You know, I can move. He, he would like that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get him in the chair. We'll get him a little microphone, <laughs> get him suited like up. <laughs> Trout, um, Trout's been all over the country, and he talks about uh, conservation for the black-footed penguin, also known as the jackass penguin, from South Africa. It's because of the braying sound Trout. they make. Got it. Um, hey, he's bud. probably going to come down and visit you guys in the audience. He's going to Everyone's all right with all that, right? lovely <laughs> ladies, <laughs> and he is going to pick which one he's is thinking about the it. lucky oh, woman, oh. aren't you? Um, <laughs> Trout. <laughs> has been raised. He lives with 13 That's other penguins. Kid. 13 but other penguins. He looks at those, pe and he's been with penguins his entire life. Oh my um, goodness! But, but he is one of our program animals. He's in a lot of our um, 
uh, we go on outreaches to schools yeah. and talk about oh, that must the, be black, fun. the black footed yeah. penguin, a very endangered species in South Africa. So, about how old is trout? A trout is eight years old. Eight? And that's that's kind of young. Good for everybody, a where are you heading? Um, where are you heading? What's going I on? I mean, penguins can oh, live. Oh, Emily. We have oh, penguins just... that are almost 30. So, really? Um, yeah, they can, they can live to be pretty. Where are you going, <laughs> He's going to sneak away. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You got to sit. Ooh. Oh. What'd you do, Trout? It's What'd probably you... me. <laughs> no, it's Stay over that. there, bud. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I, uh, <laughs> Give me a I'm gonna casually drop a penguin <laughs> fact I recently learned myself oh, in conversation. Okay. I didn't realize this, but their, uh, their natural co coloring, their coating, is a type of camouflage. It is. Uh, yeah, it, I did not know this yeah, until it, very recently. It, it really uh, I, <laughs> works great for them, especially in the water. Yeah, well, right, so their oh, white bellies, are you it, it's, so it reflects and matches the light of the surface daily? above, and their dark tops, so they blend in with the murky depths Good below. Good job, you've done your Thank homework. Thank you, sir, I'll wait for my applause. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'm no trout, but Good job, Matt. <laughs> I do have the internet, and I, uh, <laughs> I am capable of looking up things from looking time to time and memorizing them. Yeah, no, I, uh, I came across that just randomly yesterday, and I was like, well, I have to find a way to yeah. casually throw it into conversation. <laughs> How many times can you bring up a penguin fact, or Organically, you know? <laughs> People uh, love them. People love yeah. penguins. So, so trout, this is what trout does. Trout goes all over, all over goes, the place, meets the people, to, says hello, talks about the conservation. Talks about that. conservation. Tra you know, a lot of myths about penguins. You know, one of the questions asked is, "Where's your ice?" Right. You know, there's 17 species of penguins. Only five can really even tolerate cold weather, and no penguins live in the northern hemisphere. All None. 17 species live in the. Um, Southern Hemisphere, so yeah. there's no penguins on the North Pole, Matt. That's, first of all, very <laughs> upsetting, and I need time to process, but uh, uh, full disclosure, all anyone in this building could talk about all week was, how's he going to get here? Does he have a little cooler? It's is there a block a of ice with a fan? <laughs> what is the process? Exactly. We were so concerned about Trout's travel. Right. Oh, and, we, it's it's and good to know. And we really would have to worry about really cold temperatures. Okay. He would struggle with really cold temperatures. He likes it more about the same temperature you and I like. Got it, got it. You know, South Africa, it's not going to be Trout, what's no up, five buddy? degrees. It's going to be a little bit warmer. Oh. And, oh, he likes you. Oh, he's just leaning right into it, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, bud. Trout, hey. Trout likes humans. He oh. has the, he well, has humans picked, love Trout. He's picked humans over penguins. Even though he lives with the penguins, anytime he sees a human, he'd <laughs> rather be with them. Go break some hearts. Get out there, yeah. Trout. Come on. You want to go break some hearts? Go conquer the world, buddy. <laughs> um. I think he wants your job. He's, uh, I'll put him in the chair right now. <laughs> Nobody in here would be sad about that. Not a single person. I don't think you can have um, that on Trout. Okay, Trout, uh, I love you dearly, and, and I don't want to see you go, but we do have a couple other friends we that do. I do want to make sure we get uh, time for and get to see. Before we bring them out, I believe we have a great clip uh, that'll kind of set the stage. Sure. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, and then we'll, we'll see our next guests. I'm really excited for you to see him. Good! Emmett had a big gaping hole in his shoulder, so we didn't know if he would ever be able to run, so Priya's gonna come over and check him, and we're really hopeful that we get to start running Emmett again. He looks great. Doesn't he look good? Yeah. Will he let me have a feel and just see? I, I think he will. Okay. Can Priya check your leg? Can she check your leg, good boy? Hi, bud. Hi, what handsome. Do you think? Hi, bud. What do you think? Oh. Well, <laughs> I, I, it feels great. It feels very solid. There's no swelling in there. There's no fluid in there. Think we can run him? I, yeah. Oh. It gives me anxiety, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, think so, I think he's ready. The run will be the moment of truth. So, Let's do it. Let's see how he does. Now it's time for us to see if Emmett can do the cheetah run. Ooh, it's awfully wet. Yeah, that doesn't look, look good. Look at this, yeah. I'm not liking what I see. Two days of rain doesn't help us. I don't want to take any chances with him after all he's been through. Well, let's not do it. Let's see if we can get them to bring him out. Let's just let him play. Okay. All right, Emily, we're ready for Emmett. You can bring him down. Copy, on the way. Here he comes. Oh. <laughs> hey, buddy. What do you think? I think he's a little nervous. I think it might be good to get Cullen down here. 
make him feel more comfortable. Yeah. We still notice Emmett might be a little skittish, so we're going to bring Cullen down. That's his dog that he believes is his brother, and that's going to give him the confidence he didn't have before he walked in here. Here he is. Be nervous. Come here, Cullen. Where is he? There they go. There's the confidence. <laughs> Look at these two. Oh. He was obviously more comfortable when Cullen got down. Let's go ahead and send Cash and um, Kobe. We have two other dogs that are cheetah dogs. Emmett got to be friends with all of them. Oh, here he goes. <laughs> Look at him jump. I'm not sure if those three think they're a cheetah or Emmett thinks he's a yellow lab. Look at him. Ooh. Oh, don't hurt that shoulder, buddy. Oh. Well, I think we made a good choice on calling perfect. the cheetah run today. Yeah, <laughs> just see him slide. Emmett did beautifully today. He got out here, he explored the area. He didn't limp at the end of the day. The next step is the run, and I can't wait to see that guy run. Oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna keep this brief because I know what's waiting for us behind that curtain, but I am made of questions after that video. So how, how long were the dogs and the cheetahs friends? How long did they know each other? What is the story? Well, we have found if you, one thing about cheetahs, cheetahs would rather flee than fight. So they're very skittish by nature. And our cheetahs, we hand raise them because they, our mother didn't raise them. We get them from zoos all over. Yeah. Cause it's very time consuming to do that. But what we have found, we want them to be ambassadors for their cousins in the wild to w raise awareness about conservation. So we want them to be really confident, and really solid. Mm -hmm. Who has more confidence than a Labrador retriever? I don't know. Really? Honestly. Really? <laughs> so we decided let's bring Labrador retrievers with our cheetahs when they're cubs. They yeah. grow up together. That's the trick. And mm -hmm. they get their confidence from the dog. Yeah. And That's so amazing. it just makes their life better. And like I said, I don't know who thinks they're who, but yeah. they all play Doesn't and matter. they all love each other. Doesn't they love it. And, and it's, it's just um, it's amazing to see in the companion animals for the the cheetahs, the companion animals for us. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's amazing just how I mean, and the cheetah could clearly outrun or anything those, but they're friends and they yes. play together, they it's, run together, they paw, and it's just unbelievable. And when that relationship goes into adulthood, oh, you know, and they, not even that you saw mm -hmm. when when the dogs see new babies, like these new baby cheetahs that came in. Kobe is like, in oh, it's a More thing. friends. Oh, More he's friends. so excited. He's it. up on the incubator. Is there a chance? So that excited. first image I had before. Can we get that first <laughs> image back real, real quick? Okay, so here's, here's what I want to know, though. Are all giraffes this nosy? Yes. Because yes. this guy comes out of nowhere. Like, <laughs> it's arguably my favorite Especially part of the video. Especially if she's worked yeah. with them. So we have 15 <laughs> giraffes, <laughs> and um, the, the area where the giraffe are in our Savannah exhibit actually overlooks this watering hole. So invariably, so you'll have just... one peering over, and it's enriching for them it to is. kind oh. of watch the cheetah run and watch the dogs, and they're just so curious. All right, well, let's know? enrich this entire room right now. We've got, I don't, do you know their names of our, of our, our furry friends that oh. are about I, I raise these furry friends. Well, then you certainly do. <laughs> what, would you mind? Let's call them by um, name. It oh. is Bob <laughs> Francis. <laughs> Can we get ready? We have Bob, <laughs> Francis, and Debbie. Uh, hi, Bob, hi, Francis, hi, and yeah, Debbie. That's Debbie. Come here, Ben. Bob. Come here. here. Francis hi, and Debbie. Come, come up here. This <laughs> I don't even know if I need to ask or say anything. There's still audible gasps and murmurs throughout the room. People are adjusting yeah, to, to the uh, sheer cuteness and overwhelming reality now, of this I moment. I can't guarantee. I'm hoping she's not. Now, which one is, who's that closest to you? This is Francis. That's Francis. And then and we have Bob. Bob. And then that's Bob. And then we have Debbie. And we have Debbie. Debbie's the one with the spots. Debbie. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, so you raised them. That is, that is remarkable. Have they been raised with a Labrador friends they as well? They have met all four of our labs. Oh. So they are Curry? friends. We didn't get them their own Curry? puppy because they have each other. Um, the only reason we ended up hand raising these cats, they were born at Fossil Rim Conservation Center, an yeah. incredible facility. The mother didn't raise them. Okay. So that's where they called the Columbus Zoo. We have the expertise mm -hmm. and we said, sure, we'll do it. Um, but then, of course, we did introduce the dogs. They love the dogs. 
I almost brought one, but I thought one dog and three cheetahs, we'd be losing our minds. Yeah. <laughs> It'd just be too much chaos. Well, you gotta leave something for the next visit, exactly. right? Exactly. You gotta leave something exactly. for the next time. You know what's fascinating? We had, uh, about, about a year ago or so, Boone Smith was here with Cheetah Cubs, and they did the exact same thing in that they were fascinated by the outside. outside. Yeah, they, they could not look away. I'm surprised, is that? Is that this is Bob. 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 Mm -hmm. Bob is taking an interest in the other side of the room here, <laughs> but uh, Francis and Debbie, they are transfixed. Do, do you guys run it? What kind of things catch their eyes like this? Is this something you've seen well, before? Or well, we notice in the hotel rooms especially, because we do travel a lot with them, they love to sit and look out the windows, especially in New York City. Yeah. There's so much action mm -hmm. activity going on, and they're like, wow. I think they're probably going, look at all those animals down there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't know what goes through their head, but We're they love yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We're their entertainment, that's exactly. for sure. Exactly. Um, but that's one of the things we do. We train these animals to be comfortable we're not training them to do somersaults and cartwheels yeah mm -hmm. we're training them to be ambassadors to their cousins in the wild because Absolutely. folks you're looking at the most endangered big cat in Africa mm -hmm. there are less than 7,000 cheetahs no period 7,000 and all you know in areas of Africa most of those are in Namibia um, several in Kenya but the, the, their numbers have declined mm -hmm. drastically and so the Columbus Zoo is doing tons for cheetah conservation and um, mm -hmm. and you know educating people about what's happening with these cheetahs and these guys what we say they're ambassadors to their cousins in the wild yeah mm -hmm. wow I had no idea yeah. that they uh, that was that dire it's, a it's situation and very I don't up. think there's anything more inspiring than having <laughs> one of these guys next to you you know <laughs> I find that very so hard to cute. argue with Priya. That <laughs> you know, to get people <laughs> excited and inspired yeah. and interested to go and look at what the Cheetah Conservation Fund does, to go learn some of those facts that Susie just talked about. Um, and that's why we have an amazing ambassador program, and this is why this, this is so important, so we yeah. can connect people with wildlife and tell that story. That's exactly what I'm thinking as you guys are sitting here and you're telling me these numbers, and I'm thinking of how everyone reacted uh, they saw so them. viscerally when they saw these cheetahs, yeah. the room exploded with excitement. And it, there, there is something that, that you cannot match otherwise unless you see them in person. What is something, now that we've all been moved and inspired, what, what, what's the step one? How can we be a part of the solution well, for, for these little guys? One of the biggest ways is visit your local zoo. You know, be supportive, learn about these animals. Um, lot, we've, we do a lot of fundraising for conservation of mm -hmm. all different um, species Absolutely. at the zoo yeah. and um, encourage people to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, we work very closely with the Cheetah Conservation Fund in Namibia that's yeah. basically kept the population mm -hmm. pretty much at status quo since yeah. 1986. Um, but obviously we should be doing more and yeah. hopefully through the show, Secrets of the Zoo, we're really hoping that gets more people aware of. More eyes on it. Yeah, yeah. the zoo is involved in global yeah. conservation. So, right. you know, the Giraffe Conservation Fund, the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Yeah. We have we have the expertise on staff where we actually not only help these um, conservation organizations financially, but also with expertise in sending staff out. So we have a doctor that, you know, does amazing work with the lemurs in Madagascar. I went to Uganda to work with Giraffe. Um, so we have, a, we have a real direct impact on conservation. And I think yeah. that piece is often <laughs> forgotten about when, when you go to the zoo. So... Yeah. Um, Hi, real quick, uh, do we have oh, any no. questions in the audience? We got a couple? All right, so do we have microphones out there already? We set up? Perfect. All right, let's take a couple of questions from the audience other than can I pet or hold them. Uh, and, uh, we'll start right here in the front. What do you got? Hi. So you said you knew you wanted to be, um, like, you wanted to work in a zoo and be a vet when you were 10, but you never told us when you decided you... Okay, I'm not a vet, and so I didn't yeah. want to be a vet. I just knew I wanted to work at the Columbus Zoo. And um, when, what I did, I knew I had to be 18 years old to start volunteering there. And I showed up on their doorstep on July 17th, 1978, when I turned 18. And so I'm giving my age out. And I um, started, that was my first day. And I started volunteering there. And back then we didn't even have an education department, developed that. And then the zoo just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. So I followed my heart. But then I did go to college. I did. I wanted to say that. I wanted to say that I did go to college. So I did, um, and I worked at the zoo um, during my summers. And then wow. I graduated on a Saturday and started full time there on a Monday. Wow. And I don't regret a day of my life. I mean, well, 
you have your yeah exactly your look baby yeah. cheetah cubs now <laughs> you made all the right decisions obviously because it's led you here to you this know, moment people say you have the greatest job in the world and i say yes i have the greatest job in the world uh, it, it looks like you work in the most magical land <laughs> and i do we got a few more we've got a couple more let's do it uh next one's going to be right here Hi, thanks for being here and for like bringing your amazing friends here. Um, so my question was, you sort of mentioned before how um, your zoo st st started off as like a bad zoo and then sort of changed <clears throat> and became super great. Um, so I was wondering if you could sort of talk about the change and that process and then sort of how you cultivated such a great reputation. Well, I can start with that and I then think Priya can add on. You know, when back 38 years ago, um, I, I don't think we knew what we know today. And one of the biggest things is animal welfare. And that's something that we are really diving into, not only with animals in our care, but animals in the wild. We, we strive for great animal welfare. And so as people changed, we changed. And you know we knew that the important, we all loved animals. There was no doubt about that. But it's knowing what is right to do with the animals and what is wrong to yeah. do with the animals. And you know, one thing our zoo is really strong with is training. We really hit um, training and behavior because science shows us <laughs> that behavior Joy. and training oh, actually yeah. enhances their welfare. You doing? They have lower cortisol levels and which means lower stress levels when they've been trained. So our cheetahs, for example, every one of them are trained have lower cortisol levels than cheetahs that are just running around in an exhibit somewhere. So it's something we concentrate mm -hmm. on and it's benefited Priya tremendously. Absolutely, yeah, from a research and science point of view, it's great, but um, going back to your original question about recognizing that need, and I think it was a, a natural progression. You know, we saw the animals were um, in danger in their native range and we recognized that there was a job to do, an education piece, and zoos were just, they had to be more than just going to visit your favorite animals. And we've all grown up with zoos and we all know the value of that, but being able to take it that one step further and put your money where your mouth is and actually have a direct impact on these populations in their native ranges. And essentially that's, to me, that's why I got into working at a zoo, recognizing that I work in a zoo, I work with these animals, I work with these individuals, all 10,000 of them. Um, <laughs> but the, the greater good, the end result is how can we have that impact and, and help these ambassadors and help the, the animals in the native range by using these animals as ambassadors. But that's why the Columbus Zoo is so important because we have these animals and they have a purpose and we, we understand that, but it's about taking that exceptional care, you know, making sure we hit all those thresholds of animal welfare and looking after them to our, the best of our ability. Um, so I think that's really important. And we're, I say, you know, I, I hate saying it and I hate blowing smoke, um, but it's, it's, I think we're great at it. I think we do a great they job are. and we're great at recognizing <laughs> where we need to get better. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that question. And Susie, a consummate professional, you did not skip a beat as that, <laughs> as that baby cheater jumped on your back. You know, it's, it, it, How it, do you it, stay was, focused and well, surrounded by so I'm, much cute? I'm very used to it, um, but yeah. like I said, I've raised these guys, you know, yeah. with my team since they, and there's part of my team right there, Brian and Emily, who do an amazing job, and we have, you know, it's, it's dedication, and yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize that. It's yeah. every two hours around the clock, and so for these guys, we're all they know. Okay. Yeah. And so I've raised many, and I will, I, I have to be honest, this is my passion. I love animals, and I love all animals, but there is a real special place in my heart for cheetahs. For the cheetahs, yeah. And for so sure. for they, they can climb on my back and on my head <laughs> any day wherever, of the week. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, do we got time for one? Hang on one second, one second. So we have some of the biggest stars in the world come into this building routinely, six, seven times a day. We do it all the time. We had the winners. The Bachelorette were here. This place was packed. People lined the streets. I have never seen the entire crew with their phones out taking <laughs> photos. <laughs> Like I have this entire time. My man Randy over here had to put his phone down to let me know we've got a question left. I saw you taking pictures as well. People are captivated. That must be a fun energy. It's, Anywhere you go, you gotta be the most popular it, person in the You know world. it is. No. It's a yeah. fun energy and, and it's great oh. to know that people want to learn more about these yeah. animals because they want to help. Brian. That's amazing. And that's that's 
the fun of it. That's, yeah. that's what's exciting. I want you to care about this animal as much as I do. Mm -hmm. That's my goal, and I will do whatever it takes to achieve that. Oh, God bless you. Well, you're doing amazing stuff. All right, we've got one more. Here we go. Now your hands are free. All right, we got one more. <laughs> Let's go right here. For you. Um, I really share a passion for animals and the conservation of them like the both of you do as well, and I grew up, and I'm still growing up with a lot of idols in mind and people that I strive to be as good as and even better. Um, what are some, who are some idols that you've had as growing up and you still have? Great question. Wow, that is a good question. Mm. I, ha I, I do have to give credit to Jack Hanna because yeah. I've been very <laughs> fortunate to work for him for 38 years and provide animals for him. And um, most importantly, to give me the opportunities to work with these animals. Um, so I have great, I have a great in my admiration for him. He's, he's done a lot for the animal world. I, I admire this person sitting right next to me. <laughs> I mean, we have an incredible working relationship. It's, it's nice when you have a team. Um, I, and and I, I, I just, gosh, I could go on and on. Dr. Lori Marker, mm -hmm. who works with cheetahs. I mean, we could go on and on. Yeah. So, um, A big one for me is Sir David Attenborough. So oh, I, yeah. you know, who doesn't love David Attenborough and all the amazing, um, uh, he, he, for me, he's the British version of Jack Hanna. You know, being able to tell that story, being able to connect the regular person on the street with what's going on in native ranges and, you know, outside of London, outside of the city you grew up in. Um, and coming from the UK, that's what we grew up with. That's yeah. who I grew up with seeing and watching. And um, it was a huge pleasure of mine when I did my master's that he came to talk to us and came to lecture to us. And that was that turning point for me that I don't just want to be a vet. I don't just work in a zoo. I want to work in a zoo because I want to go towards that conservation piece. Um, and he was the one that kind of really flip, flipped that switch for me. That's really cool. Yeah, That's super that was really cool. fun. His narration on planet Earth is just like the gravity that oh, he Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, right? Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the best. Uh, that was a wonderful question. Thank you for that. And you guys have been a fantastic audience. Regrettably, we're just about out of time, so we got to wrap. I know. I'm thinking the same Hate thing. That. We should just do this forever. This is well, you get to. They will uh, do. This is, <laughs> this is wonderful. I, I, I can't thank you enough for being here, we Susan, Priya, uh, Brian. Uh, uh, help me Emily. 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 Round of applause for Brian and Emily, by the way, for helping. And, and that's Emily. Thank you. That's Emily right there. That's Emily right there. That's oh, well. Emily. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. My goodness. <laughs> well done. Yep. Um, and thank you so much. So I'll remind everybody out there watching, Sundays at 9, Nat Geo Wild's Secrets of the Zoo. Uh, as much fun as you have watching this, uh, just imagine watching the show. It's incredible. you got to watch every single episode. Thank you so much. Everybody join me again. Make some noise. Yay! Dr. Priya Bacardi from Susie Rex, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, my God, you guys are the best.